Hello and welcome to The Entrepreneur's Musician, a newsletter, coaching service, podcast, and blog preparing today's musicians for tomorrow's realities. This is TEM 276 titled, Don't Say No For Them. And every once in a while, I have to try this like five or six times. And this is the fifth time that I'm trying to get through about the second paragraph. So stay tuned. This could be interesting. Thank you to Parker Mouthpieces for providing the hosting for TEM. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hits Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There's another paragraph. This is going well. Video is back. For a little while, I was putting TEM episodes on YouTube, but someone else was doing the videos for me, and they ended up needing to stop, so I paused the whole video thing. But I'm figuring the video out on my own, so you can subscribe to the TEM YouTube channel today so you never miss my shining face ever again. The link is in the show notes. And the TEM newsletter is finally here. It is called the Portfolio Career Playbook. And in this week's Quartet of Ideas, which comes out every Thursday, I share about how to start a movement, the one trait every successful musician possesses, and more. So go to signup.tem.fm today to receive this week's Quartet of Ideas. And you'll also get free access to an email course from TEM Coaching titled Six Avoidable Mistakes Musicians Make on Their Websites. Okay, I'm on a roll here. I'm able to read. TEM 276, don't say no for them. Today's message is a pretty short one, but I think it's important and it can go against our instincts, which is why I am highlighting it. Do not decide on someone else's behalf that they are not interested in whatever it is that you are offering. Sounds easy, right? Well, in my experience, it can be anything but easy. When fear creeps in, it usually starts running the show. And once fear takes over, it feels safer to simply decide, well, I'm not good enough, or this person is obviously not interested, or they think I'm too expensive. Or even worse, you turn it around on yourself in real time and start saying things to yourself like, I knew I shouldn't have raised my prices, or there's no way they are going to say yes after I botched that pitch, or any number of things. And in my experience, there's frequently a lot of very adult words, which I will not share to avoid the explicit tag getting slapped on TEM 276, but those get sprinkled throughout that self-talk. None of it is healthy and none of it is helpful. As a side note, this whole concept of don't say no for them is not a license to spam everyone with outlandish requests. I'm not emailing Tim Ferriss to ask him to be a guest on his podcast. He interviews people like Jerry Seinfeld and LeBron James and Madeleine Albright. Me being a guest would bring his enormous audience to me. It'd be awesome for me. And I wouldn't bring anything to him, at least not on the scale that he operates on. I'm also not going to ask Jimmy Page to write the forward to my next music book because these are just ridiculous requests. And to call a spade a spade pitching yourself when you have absolutely no business doing so it's spam. That's what it is. It is spam. And don't do that. By the way, it's very easy to tell the difference between a pitch that simply might not work out, meaning just one that's a little ambitious and one that is ridiculous. Just trust your gut. My gut remains undefeated. I just choose to ignore it sometimes. And that never ends well for me. The hard work in all of this stuff is finding the right people to pitch yourself to and figuring out how to do it in a way that resonates with them. But once you've done the hard part, simply give it your best shot and don't let doubt and self-talk derail you. It just won't help you at all. The same, by the way, goes for job interviews. If you end up stumbling on a question in a job interview, focus on the question you're being asked right now, not on the answer you just butchered. And as a side note, you might not even have butchered it as badly as you thought you did. But even if you did, you've got to focus on the question that's being asked right now. You might have wowed the interviewer with one or more of your answers earlier in the interview. And if you focus on the one subpar answer you just gave, then it may very well lead to you not answering the next question very well either. 
and then things tend to snowball. I'm reminded of some of the best advice I've ever received. You have to abandon all hope for a better past. So focus on the rest of your pitch or the rest of your presentation or the next question in your interview, because hoping for a better past will almost certainly be saying no for them. And that's never the right move. Okay, this week's quote is from the incredible Brene Brown. Quote, I belong everywhere I go, no matter where it is or who I am with, as long as I never betray myself. The minute I become who you want me to be in order to fit in and make sure people like me is the moment I no longer belong anywhere. Boy, I love how binary that is. She fits in everywhere as long as she's true to herself and she belongs nowhere if she doesn't. Really great. This quote felt like a nice extension of the first part of this episode. You have to act like yourself when you are pitching yourself or giving a presentation or being interviewed. The same goes if you are the one interviewing people in search of someone to collaborate with. I like to use dating as an example to bring this point home. If you go on a first date, which I have not done in 20 years, but I'm still going to claim to be an expert here. If you go on a first date with someone who seemingly checks every single box for you and act however you think they want you to act in order to get their approval, and you succeed, you are faced with two options for the second date, and they both suck. One is that you again act like this version of you that got their approval, and no one is looking to do that long term because it is exhausting. The other is that you actually act like your authentic self, in which case there is a far greater than 0% chance that the other person is very understandably going to wonder where the person they were into has gone. You simply have to act like yourself on dates or as an artist to get any kind of long-term traction. We just have to keep in mind how powerful the allure is of fitting in and having people like us in the short term, as Bernie Brown mentions in that quote. But if we have the courage to avoid the short-term gains so we can focus instead on building something meaningful, we will always be better off in the long run. Thank you to everyone for listening, subscribing, leaving a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get TEM and simply for your attention, the most valuable commodity any of us have to give. TEM is produced by myself, Andrew Hitz, and is a part of the Pedal Note Media Podcast Network. The theme music for TEM is played by Ben Barron, Rich Kelly, Daniel LaPel, and myself, Andrew Hitz. For show notes, the TEM blog, and to learn more about TEM coaching, please visit our website, tem.fm. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and also sign up for the newsletter if you're into that kind of thing. And how about that? I just read the whole thing without messing up. I am very proud of myself. It only took seven attempts to read six minutes worth of stuff, and that's going to do it for the latest episode of The Entrepreneurial Musician.